why I'm such an awesome guy. I make so many videos. Boom. Hello there. Price of Reason here with a series review. This week, the Quantum Leap sequel series aired its 12th episode, and in many ways I would say that this was one of, if not the, worst episodes we've seen yet. Amidst an ongoing decline in ratings, I had hoped that during two unexpected hiatuses, showrunner Martin Giro would try and make the show more escapist and entertaining. Unfortunately, instead, he seems to have done the exact opposite. In this episode, titled Let Them Play, Ben leaps into a basketball coach in 2012 Los Angeles whose daughter is a trans girl. After she helps her school basketball team win an important game, her presence on the team causes controversies with other students as well as parents. Ben fights and ultimately succeeds in keeping her on the team and making sure that she's accepted by her fellow students. This keeps her from running away and dying in the forest or something. Meanwhile, in present day, Ben's disappointed fiancé gives Magic and Chief Security Officer Lady the top secret intel that Janice, Al Calavici's annoying daughter, gave her off screen between episodes. So Magic and Chief Security Officer Lady go meet a drag queen at a bar who had met with Ben prior to his leap. After seeing the drag queen recite poetry, the drag queen tells Magic that somebody had leapt into her, much like Sam leapt into him in Vietnam. Magic then asks the drag queen if she knows who the Leaper was, and she hands him a sketch of... Random office guy person. What was random office guy person doing inside of a drag queen? You'll have to ask Martin Giro about that. In this review, I'm going to talk about what I liked in this episode, what I didn't like, and then also discuss the difference between how this show deals with similar sensitive issues in comparison with the original series. Let's start with the good. Number one, music. Just to be clear, I didn't actually like most of the music I heard in this episode, but at least it accurately featured multiple songs that were popular in 2012. It's kind of annoying how this show has done such a poor job at music placement throughout all of the episodes until now, but for arguably their worst episode to date, they suddenly had all the right clearances. Number two, Ernie Hudson. In spite of the, uh, material he was given, Ernie Hudson really makes an effort to sell it as best he can even more than usual. It's at times like this that I really feel that he deserved a better show. But hey, at least he's getting paid. Well, that was the good. Now let's talk about the bad. Number one, very special episode. Some of you may recall how back in the day, some shows used to tackle a difficult subject on a TV show, creating an episode that felt more like a PSA. Usually this practice was done on sitcoms with notable examples like The Bicycle Man on Different Strokes, Bullets Over Bel-Air on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and My Name is Alex on Family Ties. While some of these episodes were executed better than others, personally, I've never been a huge fan of this overall concept. The reason is because you always know when you're watching a very special episode, as it feels different than a usual one. Quantum Leap's Let Them Play gives that exact feeling within about five minutes into the episode. This is because most of the episode feels like a lecture, so much so that characters are practically breaking the fourth wall to transfer information to viewers. For example, at some point, random office guy person pulls up graphs with statistics and just lectures about them, pretty much talking to the audience at home. And if it isn't clear enough that you're watching a PSA, at the end of the episode, there's even a hotline number you can call to talk to people if you're going through a similar experience. Now, some of you watching this will probably want to remind me that the original Quantum Leap series also tackled serious issues, including hot-button topics of its day, and I actually agree, but the two shows had a completely different approach to such topics, and I will discuss those differences shortly. Number two, telenovela. I often complain about how the writers and producers of this show don't understand the show's genre, and never has it been more apparent than during this episode. Beyond this show's usual unnecessary soapy drama, this episode of time feels like an actual telenovela. The amount of weeping and drama here is simply unacceptable, even for a very special episode. That doesn't mean the show can't have serious moments or beats in it, but if you overuse them, you end up achieving the exact opposite effect. Not to mention that this type of overused drama is usually a hallmark of poor writing. It happens when a writer just doesn't have any good ideas, so they try to pull at your heartstrings with no real substance. Which brings me to my next point. Number three, writing. Whether you're doing a very special episode or just want to address a hot button topic in an episode, there's one thing you absolutely need good writers, and unfortunately, this series just doesn't seem to have any. 
As opposed to the fantastic iconic shows that I mentioned like Different Strokes, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and Family Ties, simply put, this show's writers just don't have the skills to pull off this very special episode. While watching it, it seemed to me like such an agenda-based PSA that I couldn't help but feel that it was written by an activist and not by an actual writer. And sure enough, after the episode, I googled the episode writer's name and it was indeed written by an actual activist who also directed the episode and acted in it. Now, in contrast, let's look at how the original Quantum Leap series handled a comparable sensitive hot-button issue. During the early 90s, there was a huge public debate about gay people serving in the military. In the season 4 episode, Running for Honor, Sam leaps into a naval cadet academy in 1964 where his former roommate has recently been expelled due to his gay preferences. Some of Sam's fellow cadets form a violent gang that goes after people with such preferences. They also get Sam into trouble at the academy. By the end of the episode, Sam exposes the gang and also stops his former roommate from taking his own life. I've recently rewatched this episode, and while not necessarily my favorite episode of the original series, it is still about a hundred times better than anything the new series has dished out to date. And as opposed to the new show, this is why Running for Honor works. For starters, the original show tackles a sensitive issue, but the episode never feels like a very special episode. It feels like a legitimate episode within its own series, one that is well written by actual writers, and it stays 100% true to its style and genre. While you could say that a few instances of dialogue feel a bit preachy, it never crosses the line into PSA territory. Nobody breaks the fourth wall to show you graphs here. It's an episode that perfectly balances escapism, humor, action, and drama, something that the new show simply just doesn't know how to do. Running for Honor is also set in 1964, where people's general tolerance towards this very issue is much lower, which only helps fuel and highlight the discussion. In contrast, in Let Them Play, Ben leaps into 2012 into a time that looks pretty much like our own now. This to me feels like a lackluster, cheap cop-out, because it doesn't even seem like he's really time-traveling. It really just seems like the new show wanted to talk about a present-day hot-button issue, in present day, written by a present-day activist for that very hot-topic issue. So basically, it's not really a nuanced discussion of any kind or any type of social commentary within a sci-fi show. It's simply repurposing an already hijacked IP to push a very specific agenda looked at from one very specific lens. Does that mean that this topic couldn't have been addressed on this show? No, not at all. The character of Ben Song could absolutely leap into the father of a trans girl, but if showrunner Martin Giro wanted to go in this creative direction, he didn't have to be so lazy about it. I mean, imagine if Ben would have leaped into the father of such a kid, but that they were living in the 60s, 70s, or even the 80s. That would have already made this a much more intriguing episode, and if they actually told a real story, rather than just presenting you with a lecture, then maybe there would have been room for some actual social commentary. Another thing that the original show gets right is that Sam and Al don't even agree on the issue. Throughout most of the episode, Al, as an admiral in the Navy, is against having people with certain preferences in the military. While Sam disagrees, they actually have arguments about it throughout the episode. By the end of it, Al does change his view, or at least softens it, and maybe some people may not agree with that creative direction, but it's much more subtle than anything we see on the new show. Imagine if on the new show, Ben's disappointed fiancé didn't agree with him about the kid being on a girls' basketball team, that they would go back and forth about the issue. That would have at least made this more of a topical conversation, regardless of their ultimate conclusion. Instead, the closest we get is that Ben's disappointed fiancé tells Ben that she's sad because in the past, she wasn't an ally to this community when she should have been. Another reason that the original show, Beyond the Writing, could even tackle sensitive issues like this is because it had an amazing cast. While Hollywood awards don't matter much these days, but back in the day when they did, Scott Bakula was a Golden Globe winner and a Tony Award nominee, and Dean Stockwell was a Golden Globe winner and an Academy Award nominee. They were so good in their roles that they could even sell a difficult script about a sensitive issue when they had to. These new cast members, aside from Ernie Hudson, are below average soap opera level actors, and it shows. They have no gravitas at all, and the whole thing just seems cheap, lame, and pretty boring too.
Finally, it's also important to point out that in the original series, Running for Honor was during the show's fourth season. After the show had built a real following and a quality series that people already had faith in, Therefore, by then, the writers and producers of the original show had earned the right to explore these type of topics. This new show, which has only aired 11 consecutive poorly written, lazily produced, stinky episodes, has earned nothing. As a result, Let Them Play ends up being just another cheap and lazy maneuver by showrunner Martin Giro, who continues to disrespect fans of the original series by insulting their intelligence. What did you think about Quantum Leap Episode 12? Did you love it? Feel free to let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel, and also clicking on that wonderful notification mm -hmm. bell. Thanks for watching, my friends. Thank you, and good day. I am such an awesome guy. I make so many videos. Boom.